Coda 4.0 has recently launched and it aims to be the single source of truth and platform for your business needs and collaboration. With this recent launch, there are a few updates that Coda launched as well. Some of them are quality of life improvements, for example, on timeline views or on the new buttons on tables. Some of them are more impactful and change the fundamental abilities of Coda as a tool. In this video, we are exploring two of those impactful changes in Coda 4.0. The first one is sync pages, a way for you to centralize content from different docs into one single doc while being able to maintain a two-way sync between these places and at the same time maintaining the same access level from the source doc. And the second one is Coda AI that is free with some limitations based on the plan that you're on. And we are exploring that particular way of managing this limitation for Coda AI and how you can restrict the credits that you and your team can use on any specific billing period to ensure that you do not run out of them without being aware of it. The first feature that we want to discuss is sync pages. This allows you to get one page or one doc or one table from one doc to another and maintain a two-way sync between these two docs. To create a sync page, you can open the left sidebar menu. For example, this doc is called Sandbox. And let's assume that in this doc, I want to pull data from a different doc that I have in my Coda workspace that is called Time Management for Mortals. That's a separate doc. It is in the same workspace, but it doesn't have to be because sync pages work also across workspaces as long as you have access to them, or at least the person creating that sync page. You can see this doc is composed of multiple sub pages in here. And if I want to bring this data to my sandbox doc, I can click on the drop down menu on the new page and select new sync page. This allows me to either paste the link to the page or the doc that I want to sync. Or I can also browse docs right here across my entire workspaces to sync the data between one doc and this one. In this case, I have the link right here. I'm just going to paste it and we're going to use this option. You can see because that's the link to the main doc, I get the option to choose what do I want to sync? Is it the whole doc with all its sub pages, which I can toggle on here? Or is it only one specific page that I want to sync from that doc? In this example, let's assume I want to just sync the daily focus page that is a dashboard so that I can visualize that dashboard from the sandbox doc. Let's include sub pages and I'm going to update. And now you will see that daily focus is right here. It looks exactly like it does in the time management for mortals doc in here, that is myself. And you can see that I can add a new task. Let's say, and if I go here, I will see that task populated on this table, as well as on the other doc time management for mortals. If I were to delete a task from time management for mortals, for example, and I go back to the sandbox, that task is not there anymore. So it's an instant two way sync. If I want to add a new task from the sandbox that has the sync page, I can do that easily by hovering here in this case. And that will also be synced automatically and instantly. And that is fundamentally it. That's how sync pages work. It could be a page. It could be a table that you sync. And the key thing to keep in mind is that the permission levels are retained from the source of the doc or page that you sync. So in here, from the share menu, you can access the people who have access to this doc and their different permissions, whether it be can view, edit, comment, or no access. And whenever you create a sync page, that permission remains. So if I am a user, I'm not a doc maker, 
and I have only can comment access to time management for mortals, in Sandbox, I will retain that access to this sync page. So if I can only comment, that means I'm not able to add new tasks, delete rows or add new rows or edit content. So be aware of that. And currently it is not possible to change a permission on a sync page. You need to change that permission on the source page or doc, in this case, time management for mortals and the specific tables that you want to share. That is fundamentally it, a way to bring information from multiple docs into one single place. And that is powerful because that strengthens that vision and mission of Coda to be the single source of truth for anything related to collaboration within your team and knowledge management. The second update that we are discussing in this video is Coda AI and how it is free and how you can look at it from the workspace level and manage its access and limits of credits. Coda AI comes in different forms. It is free up to a certain extent because there are limits. And you can use Coda AI on specific tables by creating columns powered by AI. I recorded a recent video about all the different AI types within Coda, although there have been some updates lately. The second way you can use AI is on your page in a doc directly. And another additional way that you can use AI since a few weeks is through the chatbot that is available here natively within Coda. And that's where you can define whether you want the chatbot to answer general questions similar to what you would do with uh, ChatGPT, for example, or any LLM out there. You can ask the chatbot specific questions about a selection in your Coda doc. That is, for example, if I select this text, I can ask a question about that specific selection. I can also ask a question or a request based on a page that I'm on. In this case, I, would, I could ask a question about the sample page and maybe retrieve data from this page. Or I can also do a doc Q&A. This can be particularly powerful for teams managing knowledge or wikis within Coda in a Coda doc where you can use the chatbot or anyone in your team could use the chatbot to ask questions about the knowledge within your team or company and receive answers based on the data that you have stored in that doc. And then this becomes like a chat conversation that you may have had with any other language models out there currently. With that being said, there are some restrictions in credits depending on the plan that you are on. And you can find those details about Coda AI in your workspace settings. And in here, there is a Coda AI section. Here you will see what you currently have available in terms of credits, depending on your plan. So on the pro plan, for example, you can see there are 1000 AI credits per doc maker per month. And you will see here how many doc makers are there. Doc makers are paid members of your workspace that can create docs. And you can also see when that credit will renew for you in your workspace. In addition, you can set AI usage limits within your workspace. And you can do that from here, manage AI usage. You can see there is a daily cap for doc makers that is at 1000 per day. But if you want, you can edit this and you can change the daily cap. For example, you know that you do have 1000 credits per month. So you might want to restrict that to a lower amount per day. And really there is no exact science right now in terms of how many credits are used, depending on how you use Coda AI within your docs. Currently that is not really clear. And Coda is experimenting with those things and still in the iterations phase to understand better how to make sure that this is a solid way to use Coda AI. So you will need to play around a bit and see your AI usage and how it evolves depending on the different actions that you do with Coda AI in your workspace and docs. And finally, when you have multiple members, this section here allows you to see each member, the daily cap. And if you want, you could set daily cap limits per specific doc maker 
although that requires an enterprise plan as you can see here. And you can see the AI usage per team member per month. That is it for now. Coda 4.0 was recently released. This video explained two key updates, sync pages and Coda AI being free with some limits and how to manage your credits from the workspace settings. There are also other updates which you can find in the link in the description of this video. You can also watch previous videos where I explain Coda AI and other recent quality of life improvements in Coda. For now, thanks for watching. Feel free to drop any comments that you have down below and see you in the next one.